Okay, I think we're good to go. Let's just have a look here. Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. I guess we can take the starting soon thing off. Default. There we go. Hello. I just had to <laughs> grab some tea. Grab some tea. All right. Let's turn my hat around. I am quite bald. Wear a hat because it makes me look so much cooler. And also, if my hair grows a little bit, then when I'm filming from day to day, people don't notice. Which is when you have really short hair, it can double in length really quickly, triple, quadruple in length even really quickly. So it's very, very easy to notice. So when you wear a cap, it's not so easy to notice. And I just feel a little bit more creative with, you know, these things on. I think there's a book actually about like things that you put on, like special sneakers or hats or whatever that make you feel more courageous or creative or whatever. Hats and shoes, in my case, make me change how I feel. So really cool sneakers make me feel like I want to go. I want to do things. Hats make me feel like a creative genius type person. All right, enough about that. Shut up, Richard, shut up. Let's draw, let's draw already. So happy Valentine's Day. If you celebrate, if you don't have a somebody, it's okay. Just, you know, hug yourself, hang out with friends. Chilled, chill, 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 chilled. Just so right. So last time on the previous stream, I worked on this guy, this Dreamling. And I had a lot of fun with it because it reminded me a lot of when I started the Doodleverse. Um, it was very flat. I'm going to make it non-flat now. I'm going to add gradients and grits and different colors. Might add some more fish, some more things. Give the, the sky some stars, that kind of stuff. And we'll see where this goes. So it might be an extremely short stream, but I also might mint this piece while you're watching. So if that's like a new process for you, you can kind of see how I do it, how it, it runs, what the process is like. If you're like, but Rich, why are you, why, why are you sounding nasal, nasally? Like what's going on with your nose? It's because I'm a little bit sick. Recovering. You might often hear me say this, hey, okay? iPad, don't go off. You might often hear that, oh, I'm feeling sick or whatever. It's because I have a kid, two years old. She goes to daycare and she gets all kinds of sicknesses and stuff. She graciously passes them on to us. Yeah, so kind, so sharing. All right, let's see where we are with this piece. So I have my, my top layer, which is this one. Background color is black. There it is. Maybe I'll just move this over here so you can see. And when we turn it on, you can see all the different colors like that. I think there's a couple that I still need to do. Something around here doesn't quite look right. So let's have a look at where these things might be. Anything here? That's a little bit. Mm. Mm. This one. Those are the submarine things. Here we go. Okay, I think that's that's good. And that one kind of covers it at the top. Mm. Is that what I'm going for? I think so. Maybe I can add a little bit more in here. So the top layer is my reference layer. And I want to add some more of this color in here and here. Okay, then we can scroll back to the top here and I'm gonna duplicate this and bring it down all the way to the bottom, all the way. It's pretty slow sometimes. Hurry up, hurry up. There we go. And so I can reduce the opacity here like that, <laughs> like that. And this one already has a reduced opacity. And at the bottom, it has some blue behind it. So it's really blue 
and then kind of blue on top, just to make it feel like it is actually underwater. Excuse me while I have some tea. Oh, tea is so good. What kind of tea you might be thinking? I think it's called Ceylon tea, English tea, something like that. It's decaf. Been drinking a lot of decaf tea because I don't get high from it, you know, caffeine high. Oh, it is good. So good. Excuse me if I slurp a bit, but that is just the way that I drink tea. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of stars into the mix. And what kind of brush is this? Oh, I got some cool new brushes from Texture Supply Co. Retro Texture Supply Co. Something like that. Let me have a quick look here. It'd be great if I had it. True Grit Texture Supply .com. Not sponsored at all. Maybe we can bring it up here. Da 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 da. This one. True Grit Textures Supply. So I'm not going to be drawing with these brushes, but I've been trying them out. They're pretty cool, pretty fun. Um, so I'm going to go all the way down to my rad brushes. And I might just blow my nose a bit as well. I don't think I've ever done that on stream. So excuse me. Excuse me again. But we can almost, almost start drawing now. And I'm going to go for jiggly lines, doodle jiggly lines, go for white. And here, seems really big, seems really fat. Don't think it's meant to be that fat. There we go. So there, I reckon it could be, you know, a little bit see-through. Something like that. Yeah. And I'm going to draw the stars. And the stars are central to the Doodleverse because it's like this fourth dimension, this cosmic realm that interconnects all the other realms. And also black and white pull out the color in the Doodleverse really, really nicely. And I like to, you know, place stars behind objects to make it feel like there's more dimension to the image rather than just you know perfectly placing stars around all the images i find it works a lot better there we go so this morning i went to a place called elkmar which is a, a city a town in the netherlands and it took me about an hour on a train to get there. You might be wondering, why did I go to this place called Alkmaar? Well, in Alkmaar, there is a podiatrist who fitted my feet for insoles, which is very, very boring. But apparently, I don't have a very good posture, and I have weird feet that pronate, or the opposite of pronate, I don't know. Mm, yeah, very, very. And yeah, then I met up with a friend who lives pretty close to Alkmaar. Had a nice cup of coffee, decaf coffee, two cups of decaf coffee. And yeah, it was a, a really nice trip. It's sunny outside today. Feels like, you know, new life is beginning. Maybe because it's Valentine's Day. Maybe all kinds of new life things are beginning. I don't know. There we go. Things are happening here. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. There's a bit more stars and whiteness on the left-hand side there because of these white bubbles. And the bubbles are coming up from the fish. <laughs> I remember talking a little bit about fish and fish and the South African accents last time. Good times. Okay. We've got this white brush selected. I'm going to go for a big grain. Just put a little bit of splatter texture into the sky. Just to make it feel like there are billions of stars out there and to add a little bit of texture to the piece. That's not black. So yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Maybe you can't see it so well. Maybe you need to get a massive 4K screen and put my stream 
you need to get a screen and put my stream on your screen that's a really big 4K screen. Wow, check that out. That was a good wrap. And then what I would like to do as well is to add a little bit of this color, like this glow behind this dreamling. So the last two days, uh, a few of my Doodleverse pieces have sold on the secondary market, which uh, hasn't been happening too frequently. And it's got me really excited, to be honest. Um, woo, let's go down here. And just seeing those pieces again, I'm like, yeah, I want to create more Doodleverse pieces. So I'm really excited today to create this piece and you know see how it turns out. Okay, so we've done the background. That looks good. Um, I will get onto this one probably later, maybe later. I'm going to do a little bit of a clipping mask and multiply. Should I multiply? To multiply or not to multiply? Let's not to multiply. So I'm just going to make this a little bit darker at the bottom. Like that. Because, you know, it gets darker at the bottom and a little bit lighter at the top. Yo-ho-ho. -ho. There's managing moderators, whatever. Hey, Haboodle, hi, Anika, hi, Haboodle. Hey, is there a reason you're doing this on Procreate versus Fresco? Um, no, I like both of them equally much. I just have slightly better brushes in Procreate, according to me. Um, and I like Procreate a little bit more. For some things, I love Fresco way more. For flat kind of artwork, where I can just fill it up, Fresco is amazing. For choosing different kind of brushes, like watercolors, uh, pixel brushes, vector brushes, oh, I love Fresco. And so when I created the Doodleverse collection, the series, I alternated between Fresco and Procreate all the time. Um, yeah, besides that, not really. I think the, the gradient brush that I use here in Procreate is a little bit better. I'm more used to it. But what I would like to do, and I'm slowly experimenting with this, is trying to work in Photoshop and Adobe Fresco because then you can do stuff in Fresco on your iPad, save it, and then in Photoshop on my big Wacom Cintiq, do some stuff in there too. And I like, I really like working in Photoshop. It's just a lot easier to name things, to organize things, color code things, um, add in different images and stuff from my computer. But working on my iPad here on the train in a coffee place, so much easier. Um, and also I really like an Apple Pencil. So that's why, I'm in Procreate. Hope that answers your question. Uh, Haboodle, it's good to see you here. All right, let's continue. If you guys have any questions or you just want to say hi, please pop a question into the chat. I will try to answer as soon as I can. Yes, yes, ask more questions. <laughs> I would love more questions. Um, Let's go for this guy. Clipping mask. Just do a little bit of gradient here. It's not super important. And a little bit of erasing. Because kind of at the bottom. And then this one. Clipping mask. So we're working with this. I'll do the same thing, except I want to raise first. I will do this one first. Okay, and a little bit of this color at the top. Yeah, I like that. For the eye, do, I'm going to do a little bit of black, a little bit of I guess I could do this afterwards too, but I'll do just a little bit, just because it's white and it needs a, a little bit of attention. 
For this one, clipping mask, go for a little bit of white in here, like stars and stuff. And then I'll add a moon to it too. So let's go for Jiggly Lands. And there we go. And we can set this as the reference layer and just pop that in there. And then move it up a little bit, a little bit to the right. Yeah, that kind of looks good. Ah, so Haboodle asks, I noticed that you updated your profile that you are an ADHD artist. Did you get diagnosed recently? You inspired me and I got tested as well and I've also been diagnosed. That is awesome. So, let me see what else you say. How did you feel announcing it publicly and why? And how do you focus on projects when you have so many ideas? That is a very good question. Um, so, when I was a kid, I got diagnosed as ADD which apparently is the same as ADHD, it just looks different, depending on what version you have. So either I'm ADD or ADHD. What it looks like uh, with me compared to someone who is traditionally diagnosed as ADD is that I have ideas, I can just sit there like this, and you're like, oh, that guy is so chilled and mellow, and I'm like a duck. I have things going on in my brain, so much. I have ideas, I have conversations. You might think I'm crazy. Maybe I'm a little bit crazy, but there's always something going on in my brain. Like I can sit in my daughter's room on the rocking chair without headphones, nothing on my phone, just thinking about stuff. Different projects, stories, ideas. I'm like, oh, I have an idea. Me on caffeine is an extreme version of that. So at the beginning of last year, I was like, I just, I just want to be authentic. Like, what, what is authentic for me? And I'm like, oh, actually, I am ADHD. My wife started to show me uh, reels and stories and articles about people who are ADHD. She began to understand me, and I began to be like, wasn't I an ADD kid? Like, do I still have that? And then I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm all of these things that these reels and stories and articles are about. Like, this is me. This is me. I'm, I'm ADHD. So I was like, let's lean into that. I'm ADHD. That's who I am. How do I process life and process the world as an ADHD person, as an ADHD artist? And I have come up with some amazing processes and ways of doing things that help me achieve what I want to achieve. I've written books, I've made 35 online classes, I've created two 101 piece NFT collections, I've done a whole 100 day project around these little characters and their stories called the 100 web characters. I have done a lot of stuff. I used to be a really good employee, for example. So how do I do this? I have a, a bunch of classes around this, but this, this helps a lot. This is my bullet journal. Um, maybe we can switch to this one, this one, if you can see a little bit. I write down almost everything. I write down what I want to do each day, thoughts, goals, like I have a little bookmark. Let's see here. Like this is my goals for February. And this is my February. Like that's how I do it. And I get a lot of satisfaction from making a little dot turn into a cross, which basically means I finish something. And so ADHD people need dopamine. So I try to incorporate as much dopamine into my day as I can. So if I have something to do, I'll write on a list and I'll check that thing off. If I can create a piece in a day, I'll do that. If I have a massive thing, then I'll break it down into these tiny little tasks that every time I complete it, I'm like, bam, yes, done. And then, ha, then I have these things, which are called time timers. You can get whatever you want, but this is a physical, in real life thing that as I turn it, it then comes down. I have a five minute one over there and I have an hour one over here. So that means I get as much done as I can with these time timers. 
knowing what I want to do for a day from my bullet journal uh, and do from my month, do in my month from my bullet journal. And I try to do that using this and the journal and this setup that I have. I've got a, a standing desk over there. I have this streaming desk over here and I have a laptop at home so I can work wherever suits me best. And then I'm also experimenting with brown noise. So music is great sometimes. I have this music playlist called, called Rad. And then I also have my brown music playlist, brown noise playlist, which is like white noise, but slightly different. And it's pretty cool, it, it helps a lot. And I'm also not on caffeine at the moment. I'm trying to avoid caffeine like the plague, trying to sleep better, trying to exercise, all that kind of stuff helps a lot. Um, so yeah, I wanted to be authentic. I wanted to teach people who are ADHD uh, as an ADHD artist. I don't want to just be normal and just pretend like I'm normal. I actually want to just say this is who I am. I want to doodle. I want to be an ADHD person. I want to acknowledge that this is who I am and do life knowing who I am. So hopefully that gives you an answer. Um, on the projects side, or how do you focus on projects when you have so many ideas? I also, I, I use Notion. I have all my ideas in there. So I get them out of my head and then I, I, I choose one to focus on, either for 100 days or for a month or for a week or something like that, or I do something that I can actually do in three hours or four hours, like this particular process here, Dreamlings, oh, excuse me, like this is gonna take me three hours, hopefully three, under three hours. Um, because I did a, an hour and a half one last week, an hour and a half one this week. And sure, I'm, I'm talking a lot, so it may take me less, but I really enjoy drawing and talking at the same time. Um, and then once I've done this, I post it, I share it, and everything that I share, all the comments, the feedback, those are all little pieces of dopamine that inspire me to create more. And that's how I do this particular Dreamlings project. It's just like little bit by little bit, I'm aiming for 25 pieces minimum, and I think I'm on five, four, five, somewhere around there, and I'll just keep on creating them. It's just really fun, it's creative, and because I get to do it incrementally, and post the time lapses, post the finished pieces, pieces the pieces, the works in progress, um, yeah, it just all these little pieces of dopamine help me continue along this particular project. Cool, yeah, so Haboodle says, really appreciate your honesty and auth authenticity, and awesome thanks. I almost sounded Australian there, authenticity. Uh, okay, now I need to figure out where I, where I am, where I was, okay. So that's good, I'm gonna do a little bit of a, a clipping mask here, do a little bit of, not that, a little bit of this green. And yeah, I think it just is really helpful to know who you are and like how you're wired. Like it just informs almost everything about what you do and how you do it. Like if you know your ADHD, like you can then say, okay, close all the tabs, let's, let's get a time timer, let's, you know, try out this brown noise thing. Um, let's not drink caffeine. Stuff like that. It's really, really helpful to know who you are. Um, okay, this one, these eyelids over here, I'm just gonna do an alpha lock over here so I don't have so many different layers for clipping masks. And we've got this one selected, which is great. All right. We could do a little bit of pink in here too, maybe. Let's see. Everything's a little bit like bluey because it's underwater. But I think it's pretty cool. Maybe we could even sneak a little bit of yellow in here too. Yeah. Something like that. And then we've got this one here, this orange bit, which I'll also maybe go for this orange. Is it the same orange? I think it is the same orange. Um, so maybe we'll go for a little bit of a light orange. Yeah. 
And then we could even do a little bit of clipping mask and screen blend mode, which just, you know, brightens it up. And I could just use a brighter color, but then I'm now using the same color just with screen mode, and I find the colors work out so much better when I do that. So I don't need to be like a super color theorist to actually make that work. Um, Haboodle says, love what you said about your wife. My wife totally relates to me now. Yeah, I mean, one is like understanding yourself. Like you need to understand why you do things and not be hard on yourself. Um, and then try to find ways to do things that work for you and not rely on what other people say works. Um, in one of my classes, I end the class off by teaching you how to you know, figure out ways that work for you. So like you have a hypothesis or like this is what I think should work, let me try it. And you try it for a week or a month and then you come back and be like, did it work? What can I change? Uh, what really did work well? And you keep on doing things like that. Sometimes you read about it, sometimes you're like, maybe this would work. And then you just keep on changing things based on, yeah, your own experience that you've experienced, not on other, what other people say. Um, but yeah, and then when other people understand you, sometimes they give you so much grace and space for you to be who you are. And so I know my, my wife, especially this last year, has been incredibly supportive in who I am, my journey, being an ADHD creative. Um, sometimes wives and partners can be like, hey, actually, like, you need to just jack up and do some stuff here, which also helps. Um, and other times, it's just, uh, yeah, amazing how supportive they can be and be like, oh, I see, that's great. And especially if we work in the same room, it's like, okay, I shouldn't interrupt you every five to 10 minutes and ask you a question. I, I'll, I'll just save my questions for when that timer goes off. That helps so much, just a small example. Um, okay, those little dots are cool. I'm gonna leave them. Then we've got all these fish. I'm just going to use a, a clipping mask for this. And these fish, I'm just going to use a little bit of a brighter yellow. And maybe we can use some orange here too. Mm, this orange. This orange. There we go. Yeah, I like that. Na, 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 na. So another thing that I've been working on recently is I've got this project called, not Dreamlings, Dreamheads, which is an NFT project and it's a profile picture project and it's coming out in the next month or so, but I wanted to take it to the next level. So Instead of there just being like, you know, eyes and head and clothes and there are these clouds and the clouds all have different colors. But instead of just having these clouds in the same position with different colors, I've wanted to put these clouds in different places on every single image and have a varying amount of clouds in different places and have shadows for these clouds, but not everywhere, just on the face, just on the foreground, just on the, the body. And so I've been doing a whole bunch of Java coding in processing, which has been incredibly fun. I've got back into it after first using it 15 years ago. And oh, I have so many more ideas. So I'm just like writing those down, saving them up for when I finished this project, finish the next project. Um, and then I've also done some JavaScript coding with Web3 stuff. I've been trying to query my own collections to see how many collectors I have and how many pieces they own. Uh, for this thing called uh, a whitelist process or a premium process. So basically, I'm giving preferential uh, treatment to people who've already bought my art. And so when I create this new project, I'll say, look, these people, because you've got so many or because you've collected these ones or you, you are my original collectors, I will allow you to mint my next project for a reduced fee or allow you to mint my next project. Um, and so yeah, just been trying to learn that. JavaScript and Java are slightly different. I way prefer JavaScript. It's so much better. But Java, it's it's so much, it's structured. 
but it's just been like this different mindset and I've really enjoyed getting back into code. Um, yeah, so that's been really fun. And I should carry on drawing <laughs> because we're actually here to be doing some drawing. But yeah, it's, it's really fun to switch between different things. Um, at some stage, I would love to get into some 3D just because it feels like you can build entire worlds using 3D. Um, two submarines. I'm going to go and -la 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 -la. alpha lock it. I'll do the same kind of thing here. A la 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 a la 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 um, Yeah, so the coding probably takes me way longer than it should, but it's a lot of fun. And I have a bunch of ideas for that too. And sometimes the ideas are not just, you know, for things that I can do, but, you know, for things that other people could help me with in the future. But I need to know what's possible. I need to know what my limitations are. Yeah, I don't think I needed that. Okay. The propeller. Kill the luck. When I'm drawing by myself, I swear, it's like I don't need to know what these things are called. <laughs> so <laughs> when I'm like, oh, press this, I'm like, what is that actually called? Is it the alpha lock? Is it a clipping mask? I need to blow my nose again. I'm just going to mute for a second. OK, I'm unmuted. That was disgusting. Sorry about that. But that's just the way things roll here, isn't it? Where are the top of these things? Where are they? I don't actually know. OK, I think these are all the, the black little windows. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Mm, let's go for these white ones. Cool. And we'll add a new layer. Just put a, a few little stars, the cosmic realm, into these submarines. And these submarines are very special because they carry the cosmic realm inside of them. Very, very special. Oh, lips. Okay, let's do an alpha lock here. And maybe go for a pink. And maybe we go for a darker red here. I think on the body, I might want to add some little spots or something. It feels a little bit bland. It'd be great if I could remember to do that. Mm, I think those are good. These fish. Let's go for an alpha lock here. Ooh, what color are these? I think it's like that. Okay. Okay, that looks good. And then I'm going to go for a, a, a multiplier and a clipping mask. And just do this little bit over here. Doesn't seem to be working because I'm erasing. Okay. That's looking good. Very good. Hmm. Do I have more people working in my studio? No, <laughs> I don't. I make, I used to make classes and I make art. I'm an artist slash teacher slash author at the moment. And I have a massive studio. I have a couch and chairs over there. I have a table with an inspiration board over there. I have my streaming desk here. I have another desk which is blank at the moment, and a standing desk with a Wacom and a computer on it. And I also have a kitchen. So my wife used to work with me. But the reason I don't have anybody working here is because I do the streaming thing or I create classes. So it's very much like I need everybody who's in here to not talk, not move, not do anything. Um, I have thought about like you know setting up the recording room, a small room in the same building, and having a, a studio full of people. Uh, I might still get there, but yeah, just one step at a time. I really like my own space. This is like my man cave, basically. 
And when my, my toddler and my wife come in, we have a lot of fun. Like there's painting supplies here. My daughter has an apron here. She paints, she creates. And I'm, yeah, I just want it to be a really easy, approachable, creative space for me, my family, anybody else that comes here. So, yeah, um, that's the kind of work I do. I, I'm an artist, streamer, class creator, I workshopper. I do so many things. I run a creative business. How about that? Um, I'm a creative entrepreneur. What is this one? Select layer empty. We we can delete you. Okay, this one. Let's go for an alpha lock, and I'll go for this. Fantastic. Fantastic. I watched a, a video about how the brain interprets pain the other day by some Australian guy. It was really good, but yeah. When he said, mate, I was like, yeah, I love it. He was really funny for a, a doctor. Maybe we'll put a little bit of yellow onto these guys. That might be pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. I like it. Okay, this guy, Alpha Lock. Working on you right now. Super. Maybe a little bit of blue here. Yeah, you look good. Okay, clipping mask. Okay, no, not a, not a clipping mask. An Alpha Lock. Okay, go for this kind of ready color, just a little bit. That looks good. We'll go for an alpha lock on this guy. This moonfish, I think I called it a moonfish. It's pretty cool. All right, is crypto picking up again? Is it too late to get into NFTs? Also, what do you do if you don't have a following? Those are all good questions. I don't know if it's picking up again. I don't keep my ear too close to things. I can look at charts, but honestly, like things go up and down and I have no idea why they go up and down. Um, so yeah, I don't know if it's picking up again. There are definitely cycles. So sometimes I will feel like I can sell anything and people love it. Other times I feel like I can't even like tweet about something. Like nobody can find me. It's just really frustrating or I put something up for sale and, and, and no one buys it. So yeah, it's, it's weird. So I don't know how to answer that question. I don't think it's too late to get into NFTs. I think that it's still incredibly early. Like if you wanted to become an artist, there's no better time to try it than now. You don't have to go into a gallery or something like that. You don't even have to have a studio, just make stuff on your computer or your iPad. Um, and that's just art. Like, there's so much more use cases for NFTs than just art. Um, so yeah, I think it's something that you should try, anyone should try, even if it's you know spending 100 euros or dollars, um, buying, selling, seeing how it works, it's very, very interesting. Um, and an easy way to get into that is you could probably spend $10 just setting up a wallet, you need some money to do some transactions, make some stuff, put some stuff up for sale. And if it's really good, it should start to sell. Uh, if you join a particular Discord group or you know, uh, join a, a Twitter space and tell people about your work and it is good, it's a lot easier to you know, rise through the ranks of popularity. Um, people start to recognize your work. If your work sucks, uh, in, in all kinds of places and ways and, and industries like it's not gonna work out. So yeah, uh, that's just it. A lot of people think, oh, if I put stuff on the blockchain and, and mint an NFT and sell it, I'm just gonna sell it out. Like that's not the case. You still need to do promotion, marketing. You still need to tell people about your work, meet collectors. Um, and there's a, a various bunch of ways that we can do that. Um, and I've, you know, the last couple of months I've had really cool conversations with artists and collectors who've collected my work, 
we're now becoming collaborators. I had a really cool chat last night with someone who's gonna put my artwork on skateboards and link it to an NFT project. So you basically get skateboards and NFTs, part of the same thing, stickers, that kind of stuff, and they're collecting my artwork. So like now we're gonna be partners and collectors. and It's just, it's really cool. Um, yeah. Nope, you don't need to give utility with NFTs. Um, I'm an artist. When I produce something, I want people primarily to buy my NFT because they love what they see. I want people to connect with their inner kids and I'm hoping that that's what my art brings out in them. They're like, oh, I remember when I used to dream and imagine and have all of these things that I wanted to do. I wanna connect people with that version of themselves again. Maybe they were drawing castles and knights and, and goblins and orcs or playing dungeons and dragons or you know just believing that they could be an astronaut or a pilot or travel the world. I want to connect people to that person, that kid in them again. Um, otherwise, you know what? As an artist, you just get stuck in trying to trying to help people who've collected your art sell your art for a profit. And when those people who bought your art then want to make a pro profit, you just keep on trying to help them make a profit. So how you do that is becoming a more prolific, well-known artist. And the way that you do that is by making more art. So that's the only utility that I can give people. You like my art, it inspires you to be a kid again, it connects you to your inner kid. That's my utility. There are other projects that do utility kind of stuff, that's fine, but you don't have to. Um, and nowhere do I say buying this thing will do this or that. I guess the other utility is that if you buy some of my stuff, you get access to other people's projects, other mints, future projects of mine, stuff like that. But I'm not gonna buy you a Lamborghini, I'm not gonna invite you into a special club that does this and that, you're, not, you're probably not gonna come to any Tap Tap Kaboom events because you're all around the world. Maybe, but I'm not promising anything like that. Um, yeah, so when you start out, especially when you start out, um, you don't have to do any utility stuff. But if you do have a strategic bone in your, in your body, you might wanna think about if you wanted to do any kind of utility. Um, sometimes you can mix this cool NFT with getting this, getting that. Like if you're like a, a prolific or high profile coach, maybe you could be like, if you own an NFT of mine and it happens to look beautiful, then you can have a free coaching session, something like that. Um, where am I? Clipping, clipping mask, not a clipping mask, an alpha lock. And let's go for this guy. The sky. This guy and this guy sound very, very similar, right? Okay, and these are <laughs> cool. We finally found them. Um, Alpha Lock, these little pieces of the submarines. I will do a little bit of shading over here or gradienting. Maybe I should call it shading. Yeah, it's pretty close to shading. And all these are the little fins from these fish. And we'll do a little bit of coloring here and there. Fantastic. Okay, these guys are probably one of my favorite things about this piece, these eels. We go for an alpha lock here. They're really fun, and I like them. <laughs> Is that gonna work? Or maybe we need to make them this color. Yeah, I like that, I like it a lot. Nope, this one, nope, let's go for this one. Yeah, I like that. So these, you know, they felt very playful for me. 
after spending, oopsie, after spending a long time being quite serious and mystical and magical and dreamy, these eels are just like, oh, we're a bunch of fun, ha <laughs> ha, which I started the doodle verse like that. It's just like a doodle verse rather than like anything particularly magical or um, serious. But then I, you know, I found my groove. I found like this magical kind of space that the doodle verse could exist in. But I really feel like getting back to this playfulness that I first started out with. Um, and yeah, I, I feel like I'm getting there again. It feels far more childlike and fun again, um, rather than serious and I'm creating art for collectors and I need to sell it. I'm just like, I'm doodling and this is fun. Which is, you know, it's really important. One of my big philosophies is if you have fun while you're creating, then people who consume what you create will have fun or they'll enjoy it too. So yeah, I'm having a lot of fun. All right, I think those can stay as they are. These guys, I'll put an alpha lock on these things. Seaweed, they're pink. But could they be purple? Let's see. Clipping mask quickly here. Purple's kind of weird, right? All right. Maybe I'll just keep on here just in case I, I don't like what I do. But I'm going to try go for green and pink, which I've never really tried before, I don't think. But in this context, it might work really, really well. I sounded like the Grinch there. Really, really well. I like it. Also reminds me of sweet and sour sweets, sour worms, something like that. Maybe even a little bit of yellow. Yeah. Pink, green, yellow. This is cool. I don't think I've done that many different, besides a rainbow, different colors in a gradient before. It's good. Okay, don't wobble too much. Otherwise the whole screen will be like wobbly, 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 wobbly. Oh yeah, that looks good. Maybe even a bit of red down here, red down here. Cool. Okay, definitely add some pink in here, I think. Alpha mask. Maybe we can do that, nope. Set this as the reference again. Why? Now we go up here, just add a little bit in there. Okay, maybe some over here and some over here. In here. Yeah, I like it, I like it. And then we can put on an alpha lock there and we can go back for the grainy brush here. It's coming along really nicely. This kind of reminds me about Aquafresh toothpaste. up here and maybe do a little bit of lighter color here all right and here we could even do a little bit of yellow 
Wee. <laughs> Wee. And some orange. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think so. Let's give it a go. Yeah. Uh, yellow, not too much orange. And maybe we can add a little bit of screen clipping mask just to brighten things up here a little bit. Okay. Magic cool. Phew. All righty, all righty. That's looking good. That's looking good. Trees. All right, so I'm going to go for uh, an alpha lock here too. Go for, yeah, that's cool. This forest of trees on top of this dreamling's head. I don't know if you guys are aware of this uh, this kid's YouTube channel called Hey Daggy. It's awesome. I love it. Um, but one of the stories is about how they get marooned on an island. And then they're like screaming for help. And then the island moves and it's actually a giant turtle called Captain Frank. So it's not quite like this, but maybe it's inspired by it. But I do have a couple of other pieces in the Doodleverse which are water-based with like crabs or turtle-like creatures with an island on top. And yeah, I definitely didn't come up with that. I've, I've seen it multiple times and in multiple places. Okay. Oh, I wanna put a little bit of bark texture here. Um, where is this? Alpha. Let's put this up a little bit. Fantastic. I'll make it a bit darker. Yeah, things are coming along now. So a lot of the time, like the color is where things, you know, really come alive. But I really find the, the doodling, the black outlines, like that is where my imagination like kicks in. All these different uh, creatures and characters and stuff. Oh, excuse me. Ooh, alpha luck. Okay, these little birdlings are what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna do a little bit of pink. And maybe we do it this way. And some darker pink. And even some darker pink. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something a little bit more. Is my iPad still straight? That's what I'm always concerned about. Because instead of turning this, I would normally just like turn my iPad. But that's not the best for streaming, you know? Because you guys can't really turn your screens or TVs. All right. Let's put a little bit of that in there. Moi. And moi in both Afrikaans and Dutch means pretty or beautiful. Let's do some alpha locking here. And add a little bit of lighter blue on these outer feathers. Yeah. Okay, alpha lock again here. 
little bit of lightness on the beaks. Also a little bit of darker color, maybe not that one. Just gives it a nice bit of texture, you know. Okay, the head. Alpha lock. Alpha lock. <laughs> All right. And we'll do some screening. And we'll make sure that it's a clipping mask. Okay. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Wow. Like, that's pretty interesting, right? Like, check how flipping colorful that is compared to that. So we might even have to reduce this just a little bit. So colorful. But it is underwater, so you know, this is kind of the way it has to be. I know you can make your own rules and such, but hmm. Hmm. It does look really nice. Okay. Let's go for a really light blue here. Alright, so I think that looks pretty good. A little bit more dark blue here. Okay, so these guys need some eyes. Why don't they have any eyes? I'm not quite sure. All right. Let's go up here. Let's put some eyes in. Just a little bit of eyes. Well, I just chucked my pen. Really not throwing a tantrum or anything. That was just like a weird reflex. You can go back and watch what happened. You can slow it down if you really want to. Okay, so they're all outside the water and they have these like moons in their eyes and these guys are all in the water and they don't, which might be a key to the story. Who knows? Who knows? Ah, now this is making a bit of a noise. Did you hear? It's at, uh, at zero. But, you know, that was just, I set it up. I need to blow my nose again. Okay, I'm back, I'm back. Sorry for all the bleh. It's just life. Part of life. Okay, let's go for this one. A little bit of clipping mask. Which did what? Interesting. Uh, how about alpha lock then? So this is at 26. So this is also pretty interesting. It's like all blue at the bottom. But I also have an idea for this. Ooh, it's gonna be good. Oh, nope. Well, it might be good, but let's see, let's see. Okay. So, this, let's go for something like 50%. But then, let's mask it. And then... Go 
go for 50% opacity and we'll see. No, that is not working. Something like this. So there's like an extra layer of grain. Okay, then I'm going to duplicate this and just delete that and reduce this to like 25 or 28 or something. Yeah, maybe even a little bit more. Something like that. So instead of just being like super colorful or just all blue, it can be like a little bit blue and then a little bit more blue, but then a little bit of color at the top. Yeah. Okay, so I want to do a little bit of these guys here. Right here. Just a little bit of bark, you know? Bark texture. They're not these flat trees, they're they're barky. Woof, woof. No, that's a bad dad joke, right? Bad dad. <laughs> Sorry. It's just who I am now. I'm a dad. I don't think my daughter appreciates my dad jokes just yet. Not quite sure my wife does either. Sometimes she gives a bit of a smirk. But I appreciate them. Maybe if there's some dads watching this, they'll be like, ha, ha, ha. You're so good. Okay. And then a little bit of stuff down here. Maybe some bubbles. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> my Apple Pencil is flying out my hand again. What is going on? I don't think that's ever happened. It's almost happened twice now on the stream. Oh, we have more to do over here. When I say we, it's like, yeah, I'm doing it, but you're watching me. You're complicit in what I'm doing. So it's a we thing. Oh, yeah. Like it, I like it. Okay. And then... Underneath here, I'm going to put a little bit of lightness, yellowness. Can we do yellow? I think yellow might be pretty cool. We can change it up, see what it looks like with some other colors. Maybe make it slightly bigger to help us out here. Help us out in this regard. You know. Alrighty. Uh, maybe 
we should do a little bit over there. Do it up, do like over here. Set a slightly smaller brush and do. Something like that. So I like the way that this is looking. I think I might change these bubbles to be like pinkish. And I need to find the bubbles. Here they are. Clipping mask. Let's go for pink. And then I'll just change these up a little bit. Okay, so that looks really cool, I think. Really cool, I dig it. Let's make it a little bit bigger for you. Check it out, check it out. Okay, then at the very top, kaboom, gonna add a little bit more grit and grain everywhere. A little bit smaller. Just to make it feel like a, a print or a photocopy, something not so classically digital. Grit and grain is good. Yeah, and that's uh, one of the reasons why I do this in Procreate is because I really like this process of hand drawing it rather than doing all the vectors and then just like hitting it with a, a gradient tool and doing all the gradients by its digital self, you know? Like I really like doing the hand gradients. I think it's a lot of fun. Ah, so this is really interesting. This guy's eye I did while I was doing the line work. These guy's eyes I did not. So, what I would like to do is make all those eyes pretty black. I will do it in a moment. A momento. Okay, 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 okay. Oof, getting a bit stiff here. Be great if I had a tea lady, but I don't. Look, tea please, another tea, please, thanks. Okay. Or a tea man, like, I don't mind, a tea person. I just know at my my father's business, there was this tea lady slash cleaner slash lunch lady, and her name was Joyce, and she loved seeing me, and she gave me the biggest hugs ever, and it was awesome, and I would love to have a Joyce working for me. Okay, I think that did a little bit of something, which was pretty cool. Now, one more thing that I would like to maybe try that I would like to maybe try. <laughs> what is that? Maybe a little bit of glow on the outside here. So, here. Select, here, and then glow. <laughs> glow. Something like that, maybe. Let's bring it up to the top. Yeah. Something like that. Let's go all the way down again. Oh no. All the way down again. Select all the way to the top again. OK, 
Okay. Let's drop it a little bit. Let's see what it looks like with and without. Maybe just muddies it a little bit. Clipping mask, let's see what purple looks like. Nope. Fill. Yeah, that might do pretty well, I think. Awesome. And it is a done. A, a done. So, what I think I'm going to do now in 15 minutes is just close off the stream. Um, I need to come up with something of a description and a title and stuff like that. But I'm feeling like, wow, this has been a really good stream. And I feel like I would just babble a lot with uh, the title and the description. So what I'll do is I will mint this probably tomorrow and think of the title and the description on the way back home, which I will do straight after the stream. I'll walk home, which I'm really enjoying. Half an hour, two, maybe even 15 minutes. 20 minutes, let's say 20 minutes. 20 minutes to the studio from home, 20 minutes back, just walking, very easy going. Gets me mobile, gets me moving, which is very good for your health, good for creativity, good for productivity, if you're ADHD or not. So yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm gonna press this cool button that says, thank you for tuning in. And I made this since last week. Because around this time, I'd be like, oh, I'm just going to press the button. And then I can press 